let's create a Google form. Uh, you can create a Google form within Drive, which is what I'm going to do. In fact, I'm going to put it in this folder here called where I keep my form. Uh, you can put it any way you like. Um, I'm going to click on New, and then it's not listed on this first bit of menu, but if I go to More, then we've got Google Forms. That will save that Google Form in that folder. I'm getting some little hints and tips, but I'm going to tell you all about these things anyway. So this is what Google Forms looks like straight out of the box. It says Untitled Form, Untitled Form. Let's give our form a decent name. Uh, let's call it a really good form. And suddenly that appears over here as well. These two things don't have to be the same, but uh, they are by default. I can give my form a little bit of description. This form is brilliant. Please fill it in. And then I can start to worry about all the bits of stuff that happens below it. So this side menu here lets me add new content. When I click onto various bits of the form that pre-exist, I get more options. So this is uh, a question. And by default, it's shown me a multiple choice question, but I've got all these different options, a short answer, a longer answer. Uh, multiple choice here is radio buttons, so it can be only one of a certain number of options. Check boxes for if you want people to be able to say more than one. Drop down will give you a drop down list, uh, which will allow you to choose one option. Uh, you can upload files if they're from the university uh, and then there's things like linear scales one two three four five multiple choice grids and tick box grids which give you the same question but with several different uh, sub questions and then a date picker and a time picker those are currently the options that are available within a question you start to enter the details so let's say uh, do you like chocolate uh, then you've got option one and option two it's automatically coming up with certain suggestions so I could go with yes no maybe or I could just pick yes and no uh, I'm allowed to add an other option and when I click on that it will give me another uh, with a sort of free text field uh, where people can type in what their other might be but in this case I don't think I want that if I really like a question or want to reuse it again and again, I can hit duplicate and it will add a copy of that question. Uh, there are some other tools in here. I can uh, add images at various points. Um, I can make this question a required question, which forces people to answer it, but that's really annoying. So I would only use that uh, where you genuinely do need an answer from somebody. And then in the three dots here, you get more options. And these additional options will vary according to what the question type is. So if this was a paragraph text uh, answer and you were so expecting an essay from them on what their opinions of chocolate were, you've got certain validation options like length of the response or uh, all sorts of weird and wonderful things involving regular expression. Uh, if you've got a short answer text, you've got uh, similar validation options, but things like number uh, appearing there as well. So you could say a number greater than a certain amount or a number within a certain range. So these three dots will give you all sorts of different options depending on what you're up to. The other thing that these three dots do is let you add a description uh, to your question. Now, your description could be uh, explaining what that question means at greater length, or it could actually be the question, do you like chocolate? And the question here could just be chocolate. Now that is really useful when you start to output data into a spreadsheet, because this bit here is your column header. And if you've got a really long question, you'll have a really long column header. Let's have a look at what other options we've got. So if I want to add another question, I hit that button there and it will add another question below. This uh, bit here says import questions so I can get them from somewhere else, but we'll not worry too much about that. Add title and description gives you a little 
title section of your page. You probably want that at the start of a new page. So that's where this one here, add section, comes in handy. And that creates a new section bit here. But here it has a section title built in. So this is section two. So this title bit here is probably best for breaking up parts of a page. So first we've asked questions about chocolate and now maybe we want to ask questions about coffee. Do you like coffee? And so on. We can also add images and videos to our form if we uh, so felt. Now, sections like this thing here are kind of like pages, but you can also introduce branching logic. So when we asked, do you like chocolate? Yes, no. Perhaps we want people to be able to go to a section all about chocolate if they answered yes, or to skip that section if they answered no. So the way we can introduce that kind of branching is on these three dots again, go to section based on answer. And so if they answer yes, go to section two. Otherwise, we probably need to add a third section for them to get to. So let's go and do that. So let's have section three. And so if they answer no, they go to section three and they'll completely skip that section two, which is our chocolate section. Now, depending on what section three is, we might not want the people who have answered the chocolate questions to see check section three. So we might need those to just go straight to submitting the form. Uh, these are things that you kind of going to need to test as you build up your form. So this little I up here at the top where it says preview is going to be really handy for you to keep going in and looking at. So at the moment we've got that yes, no question. We've got this text question. We've got this section break about coffee. So if I say no and go on next, it should skip section two, the chocolate section, go to section three. And here is section three. So something's working. Uh, there are further options that we can worry about. So one of the options is to change the color. Uh, so if I want a blue form, I can play around with that. Maybe I want a different background. Uh, I can add other colors to this theme. I can change the font. So if I want it in a sort of Comic Sans mock-up font, then I can do. But my options are quite limited in terms of, of what fonts I can use there. I can have an image in the header and it's got a big catalogue of images or you can upload images. You can even add uh, animated GIFs in there if you want a really annoying header. So those are the cosmetic options. But here under the cog where it says settings, that's where the really juicy options occur. So we can tell it to collect email addresses automatically, uh, which saves us asking about what their email address is. Uh, we can enable response receipts if we've got that option ticked so that as soon as someone fills it in, they get a copy, whether they request it or all the time. Uh, we can restrict it to people at the University of York uh, or we can choose not to do that. We can limit to one response uh, so that we don't get duplicate responses from somebody uh, or we can not. And we can have things like allowing people to edit after they've submitted. So if they realize they've made a mistake, they can go back and tweak things. Uh, see a summary of uh, things that have, have been filled in by other people. You probably don't want to tick that uh, in most cases, but sometimes it's nice for people to be able to see pie charts of what everybody else picked. Presentation gives us a few more options like adding a progress bar, shuffling the questions up, and showing a, a link to submit another response, which is handy if you're creating a form uh, that is going to require multiple responses. And you could change the message people get when they fill it in. So tar muchly. Uh, let's have that in there. You can create quizzes in forms, uh, which you would do from that tab there, but we'll not worry about that. There are some more options under this three dots menu, such as making a copy of your form, 
uh, getting a pre-filled link, so a link which has certain answers filled in already. And this is where you would add collaborators as well if you wanted to build a form with other people. Um, finally, the big send button uh, is quite useful because when you want people to fill in the form, you're going to need a link. Uh, and there's a big link, or you can make it a slightly shorter link if you like. And that is how you play with Google Forms.